West Ham have announced unofficially, officially, unofficially, that we will go no higher than £20 million for Crescencio Somerville. In other news, I've announced I will not be taking Margot Robbie out on a date tonight, so she's just going to have to wait. Um, Gio, you like this player, uh, Somerville, right? Yeah, I do. Um, I like the bid, and I wouldn't pay what I think you're going to have to pay to get him out of Leeds United. I wouldn't go that high, just because I think we've got other pressing priorities in and around the squad. So the player, yes, the deal, no. And 20 million, I mean, pff, it's laughable, really. You, so they want 40. I've got that right, haven't they? they, they yeah, they but I, I, I don't think he'll take 40. I think it might be neither 30. But um, it's going to have to be above 30 million, I think, to get him out of Leeds. Um, yeah, we, we basically... Tr- Offered half price, really, haven't we? Yeah, I, look, I, I think we have, and I sort of understand why we might have done it as well. I started to come to um, the appreciation of of, of West Ham's tight uh, stinginess uh, yesterday when it became clear that it may well work with a bid for Aaron Wambasaka, which is we wanted to buy Aaron Wambasaka. Manchester United gave us a price. We said we're not paying that, so we went and bid for the person that Manchester United were interested in. We got it accepted by Bayern Munich. Manchester United went, ah, <laughs> like that. We didn't manage to do the deal. Man United went and did the deal um, with Bayern Munich. And they said, oh, well, we, we need to get rid of uh, Aaron Bissaka. And they turned around to West Ham and said, that that price you were saying earlier, can we revisit that? So West Ham are basically, you know, a bit, a bit patient. It, it's not worked yet, but it may well work. Now, the tactic hasn't always worked because it's not, necessarily work with Jean-Claire Tordibo uh, so far. And there's a few players we're bidding low for. We don't know that it's worked for Jean Duran yet, but it appears that we made our last offer for Jean Duran and then we've walked away. We've not made another offer. Um, and, and Aston Villa are, are, are understood to have pretty much said, if West Ham's next offer is not 40 million bang on the dot plus extras, we're not doing business. And they sort of wait a lot. You know, I they haven't called yet. They haven't called yet. And West Ham haven't called. So I think West Ham are playing transfer chicken at the moment, right? This is what I think is happening. And do you know what? It's a bit like it's a bit like after COVID, right? When everyone was at home and everyone was um, getting paid furlough and all the rest of it, the prices of everything went up because basically people were getting paid to sit around and do nothing. You know, things like pinball machines, fruit machines, consoles, loads of collectible stuff all went up, went up. But you couldn't get them. The value of them went. And then they've all dropped now. And people have basically found that they bought things for lots of money and they just ain't worth. Basically, the bubbles burst. I mean, the transfer bubbles burst because of PSR and FFP. And... You're now seeing a lot of clubs who are not who are still giving those sort of almost COVID prices, if you want, in terms of collectibles, but you're just not getting the price for them anymore. And I, and I do wonder. I mean, I, you know, unless something's happened that I don't know about, um, Nice are still waiting, and Tadebo's still waiting for Juventus to turn up with their 30 million. Well, Juventus ain't got 30 million, and it actually not too many clubs have got 30 million. And I think when business wants to be done, it's getting done. Like, um, what's his name? It was Archie Gray, isn't it? The, the yeah, boy yeah. that went to Tottenham from Leeds. When business is there to be done, it gets done. Um, and, and I just wonder, we keep hearing, if West Ham don't hurry up and get Somerville, then one of the other clubs will just come in and they'll buy him for £35 million or whatever the case may be. Well, go on then. But it just doesn't seem to be happening. So I, I just... I just wonder if, yes, have West Ham bid low? Maybe, but I, I do wonder if we're playing a bit of transfer chicken with this as well. Yeah, I think it'll work in some cases. You know, Juan Bazaka in particular makes sense. Duran makes sense. But both of those clubs are under pressure for different reasons to offload those players this summer. Leeds United perhaps were under pressure until Spurs signed Archie Gray. And as soon as that happened, Leeds United were no longer under pressure to sell. Somerville or Nonto or Ruto, whoever it is, they do not have to sell any of those players now. So while we might go in and say, well, our maximum is 20, Leeds are quite right to turn around and go, well, do one then. We don't we don't need somebody else to come and bid 25. We've got our price, and if no one matches it, he's staying at Leeds United next season. So I think it co- it's completely different. Same with Tadebo. I think we've seen a different transfer strategy for Tadebo, and we've seen it with Profana as well, which is... You know, well, for Fana especially, Ace Milan wanting for about 20 million euro. We went, oh, do you? Well, we're going to bid 35 million euro. So you've either got to match it or for Fana has to choose between staying where he is and coming to West Ham because there's rumours today that Ace Milan are sort of unhappy with West Ham's bid. 
because naturally, more in the course, well, we'll have 35 million euro from you. So they were getting somewhere with 20, and we just went in, wham, 35 on the table. Player wants to go there, but they can't afford to match West Ham's bid. And it's a little bit like that with Hadebo and Juve. We've gone in and said, well, bam, there's our offer. It's an obligation to buy for, what was it, 35 million euros, something like that. 35 million euros, 27 pound, million yeah. pounds. Yeah. Bam, 35 million Juve have gone, well, we can't afford that. So Nisa said, well, you either match West Ham's bid or you ain't getting Yeah, but the player wants to come to us. Tough. We ain't accepting your bid. You match what they've done. Or the player has picked between staying here or going to West Ham. So we've got different strategies in the window. We've got playing chicken, low balling, and they're out bidding the, the European clubs yeah. and, and overpaying in, in when, it, when it came to match skill. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and bargains with, with uh, West Frodringham. Mm. Um, so I think every transfer target requires a different tactic. And generally, I sort of get it. The 20 million Somerville won. It's a bit pointless. You made a joke earlier about taking Margot Robbie out on a date. It's a bit similar to that. Maximum we're going to go is 20, as if anybody cares, anyone's listening. And worst of all, as if Leeds United are even going to flinch at that news that you've just put out there. They're just going to, yeah. if anything, they're probably thinking, good, I'm glad. We don't want you to bid 35 million. We'd rather keep the player. So mm. you're walking away That's from That's how it. I felt about Margot Robbie rejecting a date with me. I'm, I'm good. Don't care. Busy. Got stuff to do. Save you a bit of money as well. <laughs> Which is expensive. I mean, expensive date she is. I'm not letting her on me, me family pack of crisps, am I, Gio? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you might regret that move. So I think you've done a wise decision there, withdrawn from that um that date off. Negotiation. <laughs> maybe it. maybe if you've got Barry Silkman involved, you'd finally have a date with Margot Robbie. It gets silky yeah, fl- <laughs> He's flown silky in. <laughs> it's it took her to death. If only her brother was um salt house, then you'd uh, maybe I get mean, some. Yeah, abs- abs- absolutely. I was I don't know, bad joke. Um but yeah, no, listen, it's um I I think I don't mind this at the moment as long as we get the deals done. I've gone from being frustrated, but I sort of, in many respects, whilst it doesn't necessarily help us from a video standpoint, I, I, quite, I quite admire the silence at the moment. Um, it's, it's all gone quiet over the last, you know, sort of 36 hours sort of thing. Uh, so it's un- there's stuff being done here. That there's no doubt about it at all. Um, the leaks have stopped, uh, certainly, certainly from the UK side of things anyway. And I, I don't mind this. If this is what we're doing, if we're going to play a game of patience on some transfers, we're going to do stuff like that. I mean, AC Milan have got no business um, getting upset about, maybe they don't have eBay in Italy, but they've got no business of being upset if someone outbids them in an auction. That, that's just how it is. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, you, you, you know, mate, I mean, we've all been there, haven't we, on eBay. We think, you know, <laughs> 10 seconds to go. I think, hey, I've got this. I've got this blow up sheep, and then somebody else just comes in at the last minute and, um, but, you know, done. I, I, I get their perspective. To be fair, I do get their perspective because it would be like us negotiating, like we are with you, say, Wan at the minute. Let's just say we're getting somewhere with 15 million, and then a club comes in and bids 25 million, but Wan has got zero interest of going there. And then man, you turn around and say, Well, you've got to match that 25 million. We're accepting their bid. So Wan has to choose between staying and going there. And we're sat there thinking, bang on a minute, we were getting somewhere with 15 until that lot came in with an unrealistic bid when the player has got no desire to go there. I can understand why they're a little bit frustrated. Like you said, that's transfers though. And if you're going to be a Premier League club and you're going to compete with a Champions League club in Italy, the only thing you've got on your side is wealth. So you're going to use that well to your advantage, which is with the club and then with the player as well. So what's their wages? We'll add 20 grand on that. That's what we're offering you. Um, can they match that? No, they can't. Right, OK. So you take the money with us or you go over there for your football, but you're missing out on X amount of money every single week. So I, I, I do get some of the strategies. I think it just makes for frustrating reading when I think people would maybe not get as upset with the Somerville price tag if we'd signed Juan Bazaka or we'd signed Duran, but because there's been two, sort of two weeks of tumbleweed, yeah. frustrations get pent up, and then you see this thing come out from Talk Sports saying West Ham's maximum value is 20 million. You, it, it, it can sometimes be, no wonder we're not getting any business done if this is what we're doing. But like I said, I don't think we're using the same tactic for every transfer target, and we've been quite ambitious with some, and I don't 
I don't mind it. If this was the end of August, I'd have a different opinion. I'd say, what, why are we bidding for Fufana when he's got no interest in coming? But in July, I don't mind an ambitious bid where if it works, you get this player that's considered a bit of a coup for you. A bit like Adeyemi when we went after him with Dortmund. I don't think we've got a chance of getting him. And apparently he's not really keen on coming to West Ham. But I, I'd rather us did that than just assumed he didn't want to come and moved on to our sort of second choice and then just and Adeyemi goes over to somewhere like I don't know Newcastle United and we're all sat there going oh, hang on a minute he's we could have maybe have got him I don't mind the ambitious bids at this point in the transfer window like I said middle of August no June July is a time to be a bit ambitious and try things in the transfer window but now it's getting to the period where it's sort of let's get some business done. However, I'm quite I still remain confident we'll sign Juan Bazaka and I'm still remain optimistic we've got one more bid left for John Duran because I find it hard to believe that we might go to 37 million, but we won't go to 40 million. I just struggle to believe. That. Yeah, well I, I can well I can well believe it. Um before before we go, I do have one more thing I, I do want to mention. Um, would you like to tell our lovely subscribers about this wonderful T-shirt, which is signed? It's match-worn. Sorry, which is match-worn. Match-worn. You have J.O. inside it. Um, and it's available if you are a Hammers Chat patron. Yeah, if you are a patron in July, so if you paid as a resubscriber or you joined up at the start of July, middle of July, or you joined today or tomorrow, you'll be entered into the draw for this shirt, which is match-worn. By Jared Bowen. He wore it against Liverpool at the London Stadium last season and he scored in it. So you can Good join uh, patreon.com forward slash hammer chat links in the description below. The supporters tier will cost you £3.68. That includes VAT, by the way. It's not, it's not a hidden one, it's not a cheeky one. It's £10. You go in and it's like, ah, £14, please. It's four, £4 of VAT. No, £3.68, including VAT. So it's less than a pint a month and you'll get additional video content, etc. So we're not allowed to call it a raffle. That's illegal because it's considered gambling and we're not registered as a gambling commission. So we can't encourage you to gamble for the shirt. But what you can do is join Patreon for £3.60 and you'll be entered into draw for a match for one dry bone shirt. So the winner could have only spent £3.60 on Patreon and he'll scoop a shirt or she'll scoop a shirt. It's worth hundreds of pounds. It cost us hundreds of pounds as well. So there you go, patreon.com. And these draw, this draw is not one off by the way. We do a draw every month. Um, it's got some good draws. prizes coming up. <laughs> we don't raffle, we don't not raffle off draws, they are just generally upper, upper, upper that's a bad mime, upper garments, t shirts, that sort yeah. of thing. So, I, um, uh -oh. for some time. reason, on well, whatever, on my suggested videos, um, on YouTube, don't worry, not the other one, on my suggested videos on YouTube, right. It had the West Ham kit launch. I've seen all this, but then they were in in this calf, and I'm I'm, I'm saying this now because I'm looking for someone to enlighten me on this. So they're in this calf, and I've seen all the still pictures, and it's when they've got the um, the away kit on in this one, and they're mm -hmm. all sat down, look like they're eating a fry up or doing whatever they're doing. So it's got the geezer whose name is Tony, who was a West Ham fan. I didn't know he was, but he basically, he was in Game of Thrones, but he was also in Afterlife. Turns out he's a West Ham fan. I, I like it when you find out celebrity people are West Ham fans, right? So um, he, he did a tweet a little while back, said, I've just got my new shirt. Since then, I've noticed he was in the adverts. I mean, I know where you got your new shirt from, Tony, off the telly, right? But I think there's someone else in it as well. It's the bloke from House of Dragon in it. And, and there's another actor in it, but I don't know what he's been in. Really, he's got dark hair. He's in ha yeah. a, a House of Dragon. Brilliant. What a show, by the way. <laughs> Do I know what's funny? That that the younger person with the dark hair. I can't recall his name. Um, Is he a West Ham fan? Yeah. Well, obviously. Why else would he be in it? I don't bloody know. Maybe he likes a fry up. But they're in there because they're West Ham fans or West Ham players. They either play for West Ham, West Ham women, or they're West yeah. Ham fans. That's the, mm. the requirement. I don't really play for West Ham women. It was, it was definitely the geezer. <laughs> Off of um, I mean, he's the he's the prince. He's basically he's the, he's the prince. He's the he's, he's his brother died, got eaten by a dragon. Nasty business. Do I know the funny story about mm. that? So as that kit launch happened, right? Mm, yeah. And um, Pale Rider, I won't say his real name, but Pale Rider. So you know yes, who I'm referring know, to. Yes, I know. Yes, yes. He said, "Sat Andy Irving." <laughs> 
there's no new idea what he looks like at this point. The Targaryen prince. He bought a Targaryen prince. Was Andy Irving? So he. <laughs> So just like Andy Irving, the, the young lad at the front of his hair. It's like, no. No. <laughs> Definitely no. not. But there you go, West Ham fan. What's not sure what Andy Irving looked like because, well, mm. they never announced him. Someone, I, I, I said that on purpose on this video because someone's going to tell me in the comments. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. But I'm thinking, I, if, just possibly, if he somehow watches Hammers Chats with his West Ham fan, might get me sort of free ride on a dragon. <laughs> 